What's going on Guardians, it's Tizzle here, and I want to welcome you to Subclass School, the series where I teach you everything you need to know about every subclass in Destiny. So a couple disclaimers to start, these videos take a ton of time and effort to produce, so leaving a like on the video would mean a lot to me. Let's shoot for 10,000 likes on this one. Next, I do all my own testing, but I also use the Destiny Data Compendium to cross-reference my findings or for certain values like damage resistance. It's an extremely great resource and I leave a link to it in the description of every single one of my videos. So shout out to the wonderful people who work on that spreadsheet. Also, when doing my testing, I don't use any aspect, fragment, or mod that could interfere with the testing. So you are seeing everything at its base level so that you know exactly how it works at a baseline. Next, a big thank you to my friends and clanmates who helped me test the things that require two or more people. It means a lot. And lastly, I am trying to reach 50,000 subscribers before the final shape, so do me a solid and hit subscribe. I know it seems like a lofty goal, but nearly 90% of my viewers are not subscribed. Now, I'm not too bad at math, so if we can bring that closer to even 50%, then I know we can reach 50k in no time. I have a ton of great content planned, so I know you won't regret it. Anyways, that's it, let's get into the video. So for today's video, we'll be covering the strand aspects. So while the darkness subclasses have a distinct lack of abilities, they have more aspects than the light subclasses. We have 12 in total with 4 aspects on each character. As usual, we will do things in alphabetical order class by class, so we will start with the hunter aspects first and take a look at ensnaring slam. The in-game description reads, activate your air move to consume your class ability energy and dive to the ground, suspending all nearby targets on impact. Using this ability extends class ability cooldown time. So the Destiny Data Compendium shows us that this added cooldown time is 0.5x of our class ability regen speed for 6 seconds after we use this ability. So how this works in practice is if you are running 100 mobility, it will take an extra 3 seconds or so to get your dodge back. So this nerf is not bad at all. Is it ideal? No, but I have ran this aspect in PvE and PvP and can confidently say that it's not really noticeable. You can also do this slam while you are in your super if you have the aspect equipped, which is great for taking out champions. And in PvP, this is a wonderful aspect for getting free kills on guardians, even if it's a bit trolly. I abused it on Cauldron to get the Adept Summoner, and I had a lot of fun. The next aspect we have is another one tied to our class ability, and that is Threaded Spectre. Activating your class ability leaves behind a decoy woven from strand matter that draws the attention of nearby combatants. After taking significant damage or when combatants approach, the decoy detonates dealing damage and releasing threadlings that seek out and attack nearby foes. So the compendium gives us more info. It says it has 175 HP in PvP and it lasts for 12 seconds. So it acts like a decoy and even pings the minimap in PvP. It will explode and deal damage and spawn two threadlings. So these are pretty obnoxious in PvP and they give the same class ability reduction as in Snaring Slam. And if you run them both together, it doesn't compound or anything. It's not like you get 0.25x class ability regen. So that's good at least. This aspect is absolutely wonderful in high-end PvE. I soloed the Lake of Shadows GM and did the boss room legit, and this aspect with 6 Coyote made it a breeze. When I would cast it, it would bait in the enemies and allow me to roam the boss room and give me time to kill high priority targets like the knights when they spawn in. The difficulty with that room is dealing with the many things that happen at once when the enemies spawn in, and this makes it a much more relaxed experience. I can't say enough good things about this aspect. Next is another amazing aspect, Whirling Maelstrom. Destroying a tangle will weave a violent, writhing mass of strand fibers. The strand mass seeks out and damages targets, emitting unraveling projectiles when it defeats them. This aspect is super strong because it allows you to deal damage from cover. It does damage over time on enemies while you can deal damage with your weapons. Plus it can damage numerous targets at once and it unravels them. So it's just a wonderful aspect, there's not much more to say. Low key, it can actually be really good in PvP too. It deals nice damage over time and it's good at getting behind titan barricades. And then in PvE, you can also grapple to the whirling maelstrom because it's treated just like a tangle is. And that brings us to the last hunter aspect, Widow's Silk. You have an additional grenade charge. Your grapple creates a grapple tangle at the grapple point. So this one is great to run with grapple grenades because you can make grapple tangles for you and your allies. But even if you aren't running grapple grenade, it's still pretty great. I love running this with two shackle grenades and then just using my grenades to stun unstoppables and not have to worry about having an unstoppable weapon. So that's going to do it for the hunter aspects. 
Let's move on to the Titan aspects, and we start with potentially the strongest one in the game in Banner of War. It reads, defeat a target with a melee attack, finisher, or sword to raise a Banner of War that pulses with energy, periodically healing nearby allies, and increasing melee and sword damage. This doesn't mention glaives, but it also improves glaive damage. Targets defeated by you and nearby allies charge the banner, increasing the speed of its pulses. And then you can see all the different things that the Banner of War does. So you can activate it with a sword, melee, glaive, super, or finisher kill. And then that will give you a Banner of War for 15 seconds, which buffs you and your allies within 10 meters of you. Kills by you or your teammates, and again, this is kills with weapons or abilities or whatever, not just melees and glaives and swords and things. So by you or your teammates, if they're within range, will extend the duration. This can go up to 30 seconds and Banner of War times 4. You start at one stack, and every 7 enemies you kill, you will get another stack. This used to have a much lower kill requirement, so it has been nerfed, but it's still OP as hell. And again, teammates' kills count towards this as long as they are within 20 meters of you. Kills increase the duration, so the health gain you get back is 20 HP, and for every stack you get, the health pulse ticks quicker. So how it works is like this. You get a kill in those ways I mentioned earlier, and you get one stack of Banner of War. At one stack, you get a health pulse every two and a half seconds, and every kill you get extends the timer by six seconds. After seven kills, you get two stacks. This then pulses the health regen every two seconds, so half a second quicker. And kills you get at two extend the timer by five seconds. Once you get seven more kills at times two, you go to times three. This gives you health every one and a half seconds, and you add four seconds to the timer for every kill. And once you get seven more kills, you go to times four, and at times four, you get a health bump every single second, and each kill only extends the timer by three seconds. Again, up to a maximum of 30 seconds total. So when you are at times four, every second you get health back, and Banner of War is buffing your melee damage by 40%, your glaive damage by 25%, and sword damage by 10%. This is a lot of buffs. And the biggest downside to the Strand subclass is there is not really any health regeneration, other than with Banner of War. So it takes a one negative on Strand and corrects it. Because with Strand, you can sever targets and get woven mail, so enemies deal much less damage to you if you're using the Strand buffs and debuffs effectively. And then this aspect gives you health regeneration on top of it all, and buffs a ton of damage sources. Just like how Arc Heart of Inmost Light was busted when Arc 3.0 came out, it made me not really enjoy running the Storm Grenade spam build. At that time, the game just felt like a grenade simulator. And Banner of War is just too OP. I don't even enjoy it because it's just brain dead. People can solo two-plate the second Warlord's Ruin boss, solo one-phase the first boss, and kill the final boss in just two teleports. Solo. They are soloing raid bosses with it with ease, people are running GMs and fire teams in five or six minutes with it, and these are long GMs. It's extreme overkill when you know how to build into it. Yes, it requires an aggressive playstyle, and the people that are showing off how broken it is are the best players in the world. Like, I'm pretty good with this build, but I couldn't do what they're doing. But still, that doesn't mean this aspect isn't overtuned. I don't really know how you nerf it though. I will leave that up to Bungie. But yeah, I played it lots when it came out in Season of the Wish, and I haven't really used it since. I enjoy build crafting and coming up with ways to get the most out of things. But Banner of War is just equip this in a melee boosting exotic like Syntheseps or Worm God's Caress and profit. But anyways, now you know the long list of benefits that it offers. So if you're good at playing aggressively, then this aspect will handsomely reward you. Up next we have Dranger's Lash. This aspect states activate your class ability to create a ripple in reality that travels forward along the ground, suspending and damaging targets that it hits. This one is very straightforward. You cast your barricade to suspend enemies, not much more to it. It can be enhanced with the Abeyant Leap Exotic Boots. I actually made a really fun and strong build with this if you want to check it out. But yeah, this aspect is very simple. Next we have Fletchet Storm. While sliding, activate your charged melee ability to leap into the air, knocking nearby targets away and dealing damage. While airborne, activate your charged melee again to launch a cluster of damaging, unraveling projectiles. Repeatedly activating your melee will chain additional throws. So each toss uses 50% of your charged melee ability, meaning if you have all three charges, you should be able to chuck six melees. This is more of a niche aspect. It does have some funny interactions with the ACDO feedback fence gauntlets, but overall it isn't used that much. And that is because we have the last aspect which is very strong as well. 
into the fray states destroying a tangle or casting your super grants woven mail for nearby allies. While you have woven mail, your melee regeneration rate is increased. So this is a perfect pairing with Banner of War. When you destroy a tangle, it does 3 pulses which restores 10 HP and grants woven mail to you and to nearby allies. And woven mail is great for survivability. And on supercast, it will give allies woven mail. But when testing this, we found you need enemies around, which sort of leans into the name of Into the Fray. When my buddy TJ cast it the first time, I didn't get woven mail, but when he cast it when enemies were around, then I did. So just something to be aware of. And then what makes this really strong is while you have woven mail, your base melee regeneration is increased by 400%. So you will get your melee ability way more often. And you can build into this in a lot of ways. But suffice it to say, this is an excellent pairing with Banner of War. And that is going to do it for the Titan aspects, so we'll now move on to the Warlock aspects, starting with Mindspun Invocation. Your Grapple, Shackle, and Threadling grenades have enhanced functionality. Your Grapple Melee spawns 3 Threadling eggs. You can consume your Shackle grenade and activate Weaver's Trance. Final blows while Weaver's Trance is active create a suspending detonation, and you can consume your Threadling grenade and immediately perch 5 Threadlings. So the grapple melee one is not all that strong, but I guess it's nice. It gives you a bit of extra damage from your grapple melee. The shackle grenade one is extremely strong, especially with necrotic grips. I did a build video on this, so feel free to check it out if you want to see one of the strongest builds in the game. Basically for 25 seconds, every enemy you kill will suspend all the enemies around it. It's very powerful. And then the threadling one is just okay in my opinion. You get three threadlings when you throw a threadling grenade or you can perch 5 of them. So basically you get 2 extra threadlings out of your grenade. Nothing too crazy. Up next is the Wanderer. This states tangles that you throw attach to targets and detonate into a suspending burst. Threadling final blows create a tangle. So the compendium says that the tangle we throw will suspend enemies in a 7 meter radius which is pretty good. And then threadling final blows will create a tangle. So that's not too bad either. It's just another way for us to make a tangle. This is a strong aspect because the spend is such a strong verb, especially in high-end content. And you don't just have to throw the tangle either. You can just shoot it and it will detonate and suspend targets. So this is great to use from a distance, which again is great in high-end PvE. So now we move on to Weaver's Call. Cast your Rift to weave 3 Threadlings and deploy any Threadlings you have perched. So this aspect is very straightforward and it does exactly what it says. It will create 3 Threadlings out of thin air when you cast your Rift, and if you have any Perch Threadlings, they will also deploy. So you can send out up to 8 Threadlings with one Rift cast, so this can be quite strong if used in the right way. And lastly we have Weave Walk. This states dodge while airborne to enter the weave, gaining damage resistance from combatants and players. Reactivate your air dodge or cast your Rift to exit the weave. While in the weave, you generate Perch Threadlings over time. So I believe this is the only aspect in the game now where you only get one fragment slot. And frankly, I think that's dumb. If Banner of War gets two fragment slots, then this should too. It is not OP in my humble opinion. And an extra fragment slot would probably make me use it more. I will get to some of the other drawbacks in a second, but first let's look at what the compendium data says. It states, while airborne and having at least one melee ability charge, your air move grants weave walk and instantly consumes 20% melee ability energy. So you can only use this when you have at least one charged melee, otherwise you're screwed. And as you stay in the weave walk state, it consumes your melee energy. It generates a threadling every half a second. It grants 90% damage resistance as well, and it drains 25% melee energy per second. So here's where it gets really bad. You cannot use weapons, abilities, perform revives, or pick up ammo or orbs of power. I'll definitely give up the weapons and abilities, that just helps keep this balanced. So sure, you're supposed to use it as a get out of jail free card. It is meant to be used to get out of tight jams. Heck, maybe even keep the no revive. But I hate that you can't grab ammo or orbs in this state. So this is a cool aspect, but I think Bungie is being too cautious with it. Especially with some of the egregiously OP shit we have in the game currently. I think at minimum, they need to give this an extra fragment slot and make it have two to be on par with the rest of the fragments. And then, ideally, let you grab ammo and orbs. But even if they just give us the two fragment slots, then I'd be happy. Anyways, that's it for the video. I hope it was informative, and if it was, then a like and subscription would be greatly appreciated. 
Make sure you check out the other videos on the strand verbs and fragments if you haven't already. And I will see you tomorrow for the final strand video on the strand abilities. If you're still watching, then thanks so much for watching to the end. I appreciate it. Take care.